hope everyone enjoyed the keynote this morning. Um, anyone from Microsoft still in the room? Good, good, good. Those of you who have been in IT for a long time know that sometimes Microsoft makes us adjust. So we're starting 20 minutes late. Thank you, Microsoft, um, for that. And I also took note of Pat Burns' comment when he first took stage about the people in the front row. So to you gentlemen, thank you. I'm not sure it's going to work for me, but thank you. That's, that's great. To the rest of you, thank you for being so far back. You know, as, as we start to work through Autotask conferences and you're going to go to session after session and look at the product, you're going to go to a lot of sessions on business practices and go through some business practices. We realize that Autotask is a tool. It's a phenomenal tool. Sorry to anyone from Autotask in the room. It's not perfect, but it's a phenomenal tool. How we use it, though, is what's key. Um, so today, after six years of presenting at this conference, I'm happy to say that I do not have to log into Autotask once for this presentation, um, which is also good for you because my typing is terrible. My name is Steve Alexander. There are several people here that I've worked with in the past. I'm a business consultant. I've owned two IT companies. I've built them and sold them. I'm old enough to have used, had one company where there was no Autotask or internet or anything like that, and another where we did have Autotask. I've seen a difference. Um, over the last five years, I've worked with approximately 500 different IT companies. Much of that Autotask related, but some of it not. Some of it business practices and things along those lines. And about 5,000 professionals. Now, growing up, my dad told me there are two important things you need to learn. Number one, you need to be really good at learning from your own mistakes. And number two, you need to be better at learning from the mistakes of others. So I'm happy to tell you guys, I'm really good at one, and now you get to learn from my mistakes as I talk through this presentation and walk you through a few things. Autotest came to me and they said, Liquor's not working, guys, just so you know. Autotest came to me uh, a few months ago and said, we'd like you to do a presentation on the tips to getting technicians to track everything. And I think what they really mean is track time, because that's what everyone, anyone in here think they have an empath getting their technicians to track every minute of the day? Gary, you better not shake your head yes, because we just worked on this. Um, so I hope not. I wouldn't think so. Nobody does. I, I did this for a long time, 25 years. Frequently I said to myself, man, if we only made bricks, and I don't pick on bricks because that process is so easy, quite honestly. I pick on bricks because it's a manufacturing process based on some simple principles. We buy raw materials. We do something to those raw materials. We store them somewhere. We might mix a couple of different raw materials together. We store them somewhere else. The process is pretty linear, right? It's a straightforward process. The cool thing about bricks is I grew up in a town that a little over 100 years ago, it was nicknamed Bricktown. And about 40% of the bricks used to build Manhattan and the brownstones and brick buildings came from that town in upstate New York. But number two, think about the difficulties we have in our businesses. In manufacturing, you have to store raw materials, right? You have to sometimes keep them at an optimal temperature, optimal humidity. Think about bricks, what goes into bricks, rock sand, water, there's not a whole lot of storage issues there, right? Think about the raw materials we use in the service business, right? People, many of them have minds of their own, some don't. Many of them follow procedures, some don't. Think about the raw materials in building bricks. You put them on a conveyor belt, they go from the bottom to the top, they end up dumping in a pile, right? There's nothing to this process, right? at least from our point of view. But if you're in the brick making business, are you not measuring those raw materials as they go from step one to step two? Are you not measuring how many bricks come out of the process at the end of the day? Are you not reacting if you didn't get enough bricks in a given day? Of course you are. But what you're not doing is measuring every grain of sand, every single stone that gets ground down into sand. You're not. You certainly are looking back if the number of bricks doesn't match up with what you want, but you're not measuring all of that. 
Yet in our business, partially because of the PSA world we live in, we track time to the minute. Hell, I've been in front of many of you saying you have to track every minute of every day. Gary, did I not say that to your staff? You gotta track every minute of your day. Have to do it, right? The truth is, that should be secondary. That's not where we should be focusing. So let me walk you through a couple of things, all right? Kind of jumped ahead, but in our business, we track time. And I know you guys probably can't read this. It's just kind of funny about um, a new piece of software that tracks time, tracks time, tracks time, and then says, yeah, you better stop fooling around so much. You, because you're putting in 11 and a half hours, but it's not all work time. Isn't that what we do with billable time, productive time? Is track that time and think about that? I see someone with a camera up, don't worry, I think these slides will be available again too, so you'll be able to get them. And if not, shoot me an email to msp at msp-ignite.com, I'll send it to you. But tracking time is what we focus on. We talk to our staff about it. We say, oh my God, you didn't have 6.3 hours today, what's going on? Right? We're kind of we're kind of harking back to to an old days when we were punching a clock, and staff hated that. This gentleman up here just was punching the clock. People hated that, right? Back in those days, what did you do? You paid your friend a few bucks to go punch your time ticket because you're running late, right? I did it. I'm going to tell you that's what happened, right? You figured out a way to fudge the system. Do you really want a bunch of people on your staff whose primary goal is to fudge the system? So the one number that you actually need to measure profitability is fudged. Does anyone think that makes sense? Because if you do, I'm up here doing the wrong thing. Anybody? Cool. And there's a few presentations over these next two days that will talk about profitability. I guarantee you they will come back to, well, you multiply the number of hours worked times whatever the burden rate is for that employee, and there's, there's your cost. I have accounting people up front here, but I get that right? A simple process. That's really what we look to measure, and it's important, but we shouldn't focus on it all the time, right? We manage people, and why is it such a mystery? Well, because people don't like to be managed, let's face it. Every engineer that has experience has their own way of working. That's not the way I work. I don't do it that way, right? No, I write everything down. It's all my Outlook calendar, and at the end of the day, I take three hours at the end of every day to record the four hours of work I did during the day, right? It's productive, I'm getting applause up front, I like that. Um, but it's true, that's what, that's what I see all the time when I go out there. Oh, no, no, that's this is what It's admin time, they put in admin time. What's well, admin time? You know, they record the work they did. That should have been recorded against the work that they did when they did it. But more importantly, maybe they're not understanding what we need, what our goals are. How many of you feel like you have your goals stated to your employees really well? Somebody better. Thank you. All right, a few people do, all right? Does the word profit come into that? When you state to your employees what we need to do as a company? It better, because otherwise we're not getting paid, all right? So we can have this great mission statement about how we care about our customers and just want to make them happy and satisfy all their technology needs. And, and as Marcatini said this morning, really be presenting new offerings, new technology. But at the end of the day, it doesn't say, and turn a profit, we're in business. We can change ourselves to a 501c company, right? And I don't think any of us really want to do that. There's a lot more paperwork to do if you do that, right? So we don't really want to go there. Human resource is a mystery because most of us don't have experience managing people. Our experience is that we hated being managed in a job way back when, before we were the owner of this company, and therefore we said, I'm going to manage differently. We didn't really know what that meant, but we knew we were going to manage differently. All right? Just maybe what we need to do is to think about how we're doing it today and rip it apart. I mean, is there anyone in this room that doesn't have somewhere a procedure written down that says that their techs have to track time? put time into a system, put it into auto tasks. Everybody has that, right? Well, if it was that simple, then why are you all in this room? I mean, you have a procedure. Your staff must follow your procedures, right? Because we put these procedures together, and we diligently go over it with our new employees when they start. We spend like half a day going through our employee manual and telling them how we work and having them, hopefully having them shadow somebody else and go through this process of learning how we do things. And then what do we do? Forget about it, pretty much. 
You know what we do? We talk to our colleagues at sessions like this and we go, I just can't get my staff to track their time. I've tried everything. I've tried, I've tried bonuses and dangling some extra money in front of them. I've tried, I've tried telling them I won't pay them if they don't enter their time sheet. Which, by the way, I did that. The Department of Labor doesn't like it, I'll tell you right now. Um, it didn't work out real well for me, but I, at least in the state of New York, it didn't work out real well. So anyone, anyone here, show your hands. Bonus plans for putting their time sheets in on time or, or having a certain amount of utilization? Of course. We all do it, right? How about this one? Right? The age-old management, I'm just going to beg you, please do your job. Please, please, please do your job. There's someone speaking here at several sessions over the next couple of days um, who's a good friend, and he so eloquently says, why can't I just get my employees to do what the hell I ask them to do? Right? He's in this world a lot. It's like, I've yelled at you, now I'll try begging you. All right? I'm from New York, and I, I kind of go about things a little differently, so I've certainly done the whip method of you know screaming and yelling and saying we're not doing the job if you're not tracking your time right anyone whips how about cattle prods we've had that one too all right i'm going to shock them into doing it i'm going to send them home anyone ever send an employee home because you just got tired of them not doing the simple stuff thank you i have to it doesn't work real well does it they come back and work this off now they don't want to talk to you and they go fine send them home again i don't care it doesn't matter all right you're still going to pay me Right? Threatening your jobs. By the way, if you go online and you look up your fire and try and find an image for it, it is very difficult to get one that does not look a lot like one of our presidential candidates. Very, very difficult to find. Although this one kind of looks like him a little bit. Right? <laughs> but, but you notice that we've got all these things and we can barely see policy in the background anymore, right? Shouldn't policy be enough? I mean, isn't, isn't that all we need? Just maybe, we need to start changing our focus. Now, I don't know how well you guys, yeah, it works out pretty well. Any photographers in the room? Yeah, I, um, I strive, I'm working very hard. I strive to someday be a lousy amateur photographer. I'm working hard at it. But what I have learned is that you can look at something and change the focus point and have the whole picture look different. Sometimes, for me, about one out of every 10,000 photos actually looks good. You can really, really make something of it, all right? But in business, it's the same thing, all right? Shouldn't we, instead of sending the same message over and over and over again, that clearly our staff isn't responding to, judging from the show of hands in here, shouldn't we think of a different way? Change our focus? Change what we're talking about? This revelation came to me about seven, eight years ago. When, when the flat part of my forehead was starting to bother me from banging my head against the wall so much about timesheets and putting them in and everything. And I literally said, I am never going to say it again. I am never going to ask anyone for their timesheet. I'm never going to ask anyone for the, for the time. I'm never going to ask them what they did in their day because it only has three hours recorded. I'm going to start looking at something different. For me, it was due dates on tickets. I started to look at that and said, well, if all the tickets are up to date, and we'll be in good shape. That's where I went with it. But there are a lot of places you can go with, right? A real lot of places. The point I'm trying to make here is maybe we should start tracking productivity, focusing on productivity. We'll still measure time, just like we measure all the raw materials going into those bricks. We'll measure the time, but let's not focus on it, right? We hear a lot about Gen Xers. How many Gen Xers in the room? Thank you for being with us so early in the day. I appreciate that. Uh, that's my joke about Gen Xers, right? We all think Gen Xers work differently. Well, yeah, they're a younger generation. Of course, they work differently. No one wants to be responsible for punching your clock. I don't care what generation you are, right? That's just a byproduct, right? Here, here's the example I've been using lately, and I'm looking around to see if any of my current clients are in the room that might have just heard this story, but here's the example I use. Everyone has had this situation, everyone that runs an IT service business. Phone rings, client calls, and they say something to the effect of, hey, so-and-so was here working on my computer when I went into a meeting. I just got out, he's not here, I have no idea if the problem's fixed, and what it was, I really want to know what it was. Can you tell me? Anybody, anybody ever get that call, right? 
At least once a week, we get that call. Probably once a day, we get that call. Well, let's think about the type of company you want to have. You can be one of two companies, right? There's no in between. You can either be the company that says, sure, just bear with me one second. Let me check the ticket notes. Let me explain to you exactly what was done, where you're at, what the next steps are, and maybe ask you to test something because there's a note in there. You could be that company, or you could be the company, and I know a lot of us have been there, that says, can I call you back? Can I get back to you? Let me see if I can reach him. Do you want to hold while I try and call him on his cell phone while he's driving to another? I mean, which company do you want to be? Right? Change your folks a minute. We all know the people in this room who are predominantly managers and business owners. You know which company you want to be. It's pretty obvious. Hell, if we ask your employees, they tell us the same thing, which company you want to be. But how about, give me one second, sir, let me, let me get through this point. But how about if we take each and every employee and for just a short period of time, we put them in the role where they have to answer that question? Where they have to be the ones to say to your customer, can I get back to you this? And we know that statement never comes out with confidence, right? There's always a hesitation in our voice. There's always, we're embarrassed. We know it's not the company we want. Right? It's pretty straightforward and simple. We know it's not the company we want. Put your employee in that role. Matter of fact, every new employee should start in that role, even if it's only part of the, the indoctrination and the onboarding process. Make them sit in that seat. Make them actually question, wait a minute, there's got to be a better way. Right? Because if you do that, don't you turn that person into someone that says, i got to document this for the best interest of this customer, my company, the, my fellow employees, my family, because my future is tied to Isn't that the way we want them to think? Think about that. Yes, sir. Well, I'll, this is the third way, which came up to me last week. Um, same situation, what happened there, right? I went and did the job, that's great. No one knows it, the job's not done. So I said, before you go, coordinate, tell them what you're gonna do, put the ticket, brought me a job, and then person's out there, tell somebody you did something. That way you don't have to call you up and say what you do. So this gentleman said there's a third way to handle that, that scenario, and, and that was make sure your employee knows to tell someone else in the company. Now we're playing the telephone game, right? Did they get the story right? Did they get, listen, we can document, we can send emails. We should send emails. Don't we send completed ticket emails out of Autotask? Doesn't that require documenting the work we did? Well, we might as well put down the time we spent and be done and move on. And that's kind of the point I'm making here, that we need to go through a process where we say, what kind of company do we want to be? This industry is changing, folks, right? There are people out there that will tell you, um, not this morning, we didn't hear that this morning, and I'm not saying I agree with this, but there are people out there that are saying, hey, managed services is a dying market. It's a dying go-to-market strategy. Now, I can tell you this, I, I wholeheartedly disagree, but it is a changing strategy. Right? We're all offering cloud solutions. We're all offering much more commoditized solutions today than we did five years ago. And five years ago, we fought commoditization. We said, we don't want commoditization. Oh my God, if we have that, my competitors can sell the same thing. Well, guess what? Customer service is your differentiator now. 100%. It is your differentiator. Yes, you have to have the good technical solutions, good people working for you. You have to have all of them. But customer service and your policies and procedures and how well you guys perform on a customer service basis is really the key to this industry moving forward, right? So change the focus a little bit. Talk to your employees about how we track productivity, how we make sure that our customer service, our deliverable is on point all the time without extra phone calls, without any of this stuff, right? Take them out. Jeff Jewell, are you still in here? I don't know if he stayed or not. Uh, one, of my one of my clients, Jeff Jewell from uh, uh, Phillipsburg, New Jersey, has a brand new person working for him that, quite honestly, wasn't raised to understand the level of customer service we want to deliver to our clients. She just wasn't. And we were struggling with it. He said, what are we going to do? And I said, you need to let her come with me for a day. And he said, what do you mean? I said, you're going to put her on a bus, send her to New York City, I'm going to meet her, and I'm going to train her for a day. And he said, well, can you tell me what the training's gonna be like? I said, I can't because you're not gonna like it. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, there's this really good French bistro downtown Manhattan. I'm gonna take her there for breakfast. 
I mean first class, top notch place, taking her there for breakfast. I said, my favorite steakhouse in Manhattan, I'm going to take her there for dinner before I put her on bus and send her home. And in between, I have some training materials I'm going to go over. All right? That's what we did. He called me the next day and he said, what did you do with Erin? She's a different person. She gets it. Well, we need to think that way. Think outside the box a little bit with your staff and help them learn what you want to create, right? This next one was always hard for me as a manager. Always really difficult for me. I always thought you're a manager, so you tell your employees what you want to do. Back to, back to the statement I made earlier, why can't they just do what I tell them to do? Right? That's kind of the way I always thought too, is you tell them what to do and you set the goals and they follow. Well, it doesn't really work that way. As a matter of fact, it's not very motivating to be told what to do, right? I've never worked well with it anyway. I know some people do, right? Why not set the goals with them rather than for them? And oh, by the way, you can steer them to set the goals exactly the same way you would have if you just told them what they were. But involve them in a meeting, involve them in conversation to do this, right? Get them to understand that the person that answers the phone in your company, that takes that phone call from the client that says, hey, I just want to know what they did when they were here working on my computer, or I just want to know when this work will be done, that person's role is very important to your company. Get the rest of the staff, the technical staff, to understand that's not just the person you hide behind, that's the person that makes us a better company. And oh, by the way, they only do that if you give them the information, if you make sure you share that, right? Swap roles. How many people swap roles in their company? Change, I have a system engineer work, work as a service coordinator for a week, right? We can't have a service coordinator work as an engineer, but we can have them shadow, right? Um, I know not every company is of the size that can do that, but think about it and try it. And if you can't do it, have some role play sessions with your staff. Do some staff development work where you put them in a situation to act as if they're answering the phone and a customer's calling. And oh, by the way, be the customer and pull them off the hook. Be nasty. I know none of you have nasty customers, but I, I used to. So be that way. Push them, push them a little bit to think and to make some decisions. All right? Go through it that way. All right? No carryover. This is really the one that changes the game for us. If you really think about it, all right? We have 100 new issues that come in today, 100 tickets, right? We have the capability to maybe handle 80 of those tickets. We have 100 that come in tomorrow, same capability. 100 that come in the next day, same capability. Where are we at at the end of the week, right? Holy crap, I need more staff. That's really what, right? I need more staff. And then we run that profit report I talked about earlier and we go, we can't possibly need more staff because we don't have the money for it. So how could that be? Well, manage things a little better. Think, think about this, when you start your day, do you like to just get up, take a look at your calendar, know what's on the tap, and move forward, start the day? Or do you want to take an hour to try and prioritize your day because there's so much stuff left piled up from yesterday? Right? Rhetorical question. I don't know anybody that really wants to take that out. Right? Some people think they work better. Who here works well with desk stress? Has piles of paper on their desk and says, no, I know where everything is, I'll never touch it. Who's ever seen? There's only one honest person in this room, by the way. There's only one guy sheepishly raised his hand. I know that's not true. I've met you. I've met people that say, no, 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 this is the way I work. I get it. I know where everything is. Hey, you know where everything is. It's on your desk somewhere in the mix and mess and piles that you have on your desk. You can't be efficient that way, nobody can. What you can do is say, I never lose anything, because it's all on my desk. I don't necessarily hit all my deadlines, because I don't see what's prioritized, but it's all here on my desk. If someone walks in, I will find it on my desk. Well, do you let your staff work that way? In Autotask, it's working with due dates and SLAs. Pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple, you know. Make those due dates matter, make the SLAs work for you, make them dynamic in nature and change every day. Communicate with your clients at the end of the day. You ever talk to a, an engineer that says, Well, I'm not gonna let the client know that I'm not getting this to this till tomorrow because they'll be upset. Anyone ever hear that? 
I mean, I used to hear it all the time, and I go, so tomorrow there'll be lessons. I'm missing something. Oh, well, maybe they'll be busy in the morning, and I'll get it resolved before I have to talk to them. Right? The old, I don't want to talk to them. You need to drive that as managers, as business owners, and say, wait a minute, the tool is here, and if it's not, there's plenty of plug-on tools that'll work with it. They're here to manage this better. Stop focusing on time, start working on tasks. Think about those tasks, all right? It'll work better for you, all right? Reward results. Now, I don't mean the dangling the, the pile of money for hitting submit on your timesheet. I never understood that one. It's one button. We can just hit the button. It's okay, all right? But reward results. And reward them in ways that make sense, all right? To the, to the person in your company who's, a, who's got young kids at home, reward them with a day off or an afternoon off to go do something with their kids, right? To the person that sits at home and plays games, then get them, get them some, some new device that's gonna help them, whether it's a new headset, right? More memory for their machine or, or a fifth monitor for them to hang up in their bedroom wall, whatever it may be, you know, reward them with these things. I posted these things up here because they actually came from a, from a tool, a survey tool that will let you reward your client, your employees based on client feedback, which kind of makes sense. The tool is called Truhu, by the way, and it does work with Autotest. And it's a survey tool that also lets you have contests and set certain things up. But do you ever run a contest and, and walk into the bullpen area and hear your staff actually talking about how they're gonna win something? And even if it's something stupid, you know, come back from a conference with those $5 Starbucks cards. Right? You can get half a coffee at Starbucks for five dollars. If I would go back to a conference and hand put those five dollar Starbucks cards, my staff thought that like I gave them, I doubled their salary because I handed them. I would let them go. I should probably give them another five dollars because these cards aren't worth anything. They're they're useless. But that's what people like: recognition, pat them on the back, right? Tell them they did a great job. Does that make sense to anybody? Karen, I don't know who else we've got out there with microphones, but I'm going to pause here for a minute and ask, does anyone have an employee recognition program that they say, oh my God, it's changed our company? Guy walks in late, raises his hand. I love this. I love this. I got a microphone coming behind you if you want to tell us. You're not with Microsoft, right? No. Just check. I'm going to have to pop in the rest of the two days. Um, yeah, we do have a employee recognition program. We call it a paycheck, and uh, they get it. But we, in, in all seriousness, we do uh, recognize those people in that during the month that show and go above and beyond. So we use and we started leveraging a social media platform, Yammer, inside the Office 365 platform. Yep. And we use the praise feature, and we. we put out a poll on who the other employees think have gone above and beyond and that person gets uh, like a $250 gift card. Um, we try to be creative with it. But, uh, so you have your employees vote for each other? Yes. I love it. Anybody else? I'm kind of right up in front of you. So we use a uh, micro bonus platform called Bonusly where the team gets a budget per person and they're able to recognize their peers by giving micro bonuses anywhere from like three to six dollars I believe and as you rack them up that system also has a catalog of rewards that they're able to choose from and so they get to pick Amazon gift cards or whatever they want for their own bonus. How many people here? Um, it's right at 20. Okay. So How many people in your circle? Okay. So about the same size. 20, 20 employees or so for both of them. Anybody else have anything that you've used customer facing where a customer can, can help your employees win something? I didn't either, by the way. And you know, it's funny because we're the most important people in our organization. Customers, isn't that who we service? Isn't that what we want to hear? Don't we want praise from them? Don't, don't our employees want praise from them? You know, it's an important thing um, to look at. All right. This last one, 
How many of you are business owners in this room? How many of you wish your business owners were here to hear me talk about walk to the walk? <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. This is the biggest issue that we all face, and I did too. We tell our employees they have to track everything. We tell them they have to track every minute of their day. We, we give them a hard time if they don't hit submit on timesheets. And then what do we do? We take owner privileges, right? Well, my time is as important. I'm not customer facing anymore, so I, my time's not important. And um, I'm not gonna go look at the ticket to find out what went on with something. I'm gonna walk up to an employee, call them and say, hey, what's going on with this? Customers call me, right? You need to walk the walk. Think about this. If we're gonna have our employees document everything in real time, every time they do something, everything customer facing, we're gonna empower them to use the tools that we've, we've spent so much time and money on, then you need to do it too. Now this hit me in the face when I had a service coordinator. I made a mistake. I hired a service coordinator that I knew really well and she felt that it was okay to walk into my office anytime and to say whatever she wanted to me. And I say I made a mistake. It was the best thing I ever did for the company, but boy, it was painful for me. Um, it, it was rough. So, like, if I went over to a help desk person to say, hey, can you tell me what's going on with this? The customer shoot me an email asking when we're going to have it fixed. She would go, don't answer me. Go read the ticket. Right? And I'd be going, I signed the checks. Wait a minute. This doesn't seem right. And uh, it was an all male company except for this hire, and they all started to realize, yeah, we don't even go to Steve anymore. We go to Kat, and she gets him to do whatever it is that, that we want done. And that's the way they would work. But as much as I didn't like her doing that in front of everybody, she was 100% right. I'm asking them to document. Why shouldn't I read that first? And if it's incomplete, then ask questions, all right? So I learned, and I learned the hard way because she literally would yell at me in front of my own staff. Um, I learned that if I was on the road and asking for information, then I needed to say, hey, I'm in the car, can't pull over, can't look at live mobile, or I'm gonna have an accident or get a ticket, need to know what's going on because this client needs to hear from me right now. And then they, that was a fair question. But as business owners, how many of you Look at your own time in the system. The same guy that didn't really need to hear most of my presentation has, has a lot of hands. I like this, this is good. This is, this is good. But that is the way it should be, right? As owners, we should be setting the example. That's exactly what we should be doing. And we don't, quite honestly. I didn't either. Every company I look at doesn't either, right? Use the system, enter your time, Communicate with clients. How many of us communicate with clients through tickets? Most of us go right to Outlook and email the client, right? How does our staff know what we said to the client if we're emailing through Outlook? They don't. And think about that. Again, go back to my initial example. What type of company do you want to be? Don't you want to be the company where no matter what employee your client talks to, they have all the answers? Isn't that where we really want to be? So you need to set that example and walk the walk. And it's hard because, hey, we're business owners. You know, on one hand, we work 17, 18 hour days. On the other hand, we can take off and go fishing anytime we want, right? And that's really what it, what it amounts to. But use the tool. Use it the way it was intended to use and show the examples, all right? Um, I am allowing about 10 minutes, maybe a little more, actually 12 minutes for Q&A at the end, so uh, we'll see any other thoughts and ideas you have, but there are some takeaways from this, right? Things you can take away. Think about the examples I gave, all right? The first one is allow Autotest to do the measuring of time and stop beating up your employees so much about it, all right? Um, I debate with a, with a colleague here who's much smarter than me, so I lose this debate a lot, but I debate this often. I don't think the timesheet in Autotest should be about your time clock. I don't think it needs to add up to eight hours. Yes, I gave you credit for being smarter than you, by the way. I wanted to make sure you understood I was talking about you. Being smarter than me, I assumed you did. But um, Use the tool to track it. 
but don't make it your time clock. If you have hourly employees, if your payroll company has a timesheet app that you could use, go online and find one. There's spreadsheets out there. Your time clock should not be autotask, in my opinion. And there are multiple ways to skin a cat. Oh, obviously, I've already said someone smarter than me goes about it a little bit differently. But that's where. I would. Well, so she's smarter than me too. The whole row there. I don't know who you are, but the three women in that row are clearly smarter than me. All right, that much I know for sure. I don't know you either, but but clearly the three women are smarter than me, as are most women in my life. All right. Um, help the staff set goals rather than set them for them. All right, and this is important because I'm going to tell you that it was rare that my staff set a goal that I didn't want set. And it was rare that they ignored a goal that I wanted. But yet we would have these meetings where I'd say, come on, give me your ideas. And I would help steer some of them towards the goals I wanted, but make them feel part of the solution, right? Unless you have a company with 50 or more employees, right? And the mass majority of the people in this room do not fit that description. You cannot dictate to your staff that way. They, you, we want this boutique feel, this family atmosphere. We want them all to be empowered. We need to let them feel like they helped make the decisions. Now, there's two things that happen with this. Number one, you get them to do some of the work, so it's kind of nice. But number two, when they go against some of these goals and say, yeah, but I know that's one of our goals, but it's not important to me. Well, wait a minute. You don't get to say that in the heat of the moment anymore. You helped in a meeting that we sat down. You helped design this. You bought into this then. Now, if you want to bring it up the next time we meet to discuss our goals and the numbers we look at and the metrics that matter to us, by all means, we can talk about it. But day in and day out, you don't get to ignore this anymore. You are part of the solution. Therefore, you have to follow that plan. Make sense? I didn't manage that way for everybody either, by the way. Um, but I tried to. Um, don't let the garbage pile up, right? In, uh, any New Yorkers in the room? Any New Yorkers old enough to remember the garbage strike way back? Um, where we would just pile up and pile up and pile up? Man, it was nasty. Um, you, couldn't, you couldn't go into Manhattan, it was, it was bad. But think about it in our own lives, we all do it. We let the garbage pile up. We let the stuff we didn't get to yesterday pile up on us. We shouldn't. Every day should end with setting up the next day. Think about that. Everyone should go home knowing what's on their plate the next morning, with the exception of what comes in overnight. Yes, I know stuff comes in overnight. But the, the tickets, the work, the alerts, God, the alerts, um, the multiple alerts that we get, we should have them handled, at least in knowing, oh, so-and-so's got to work uh, our RMM tickets the first half of the day, no matter what. He's not available to customers. Got to get caught up on those. Know that stuff. Have it ready to go. Reward and customer satisfaction. All right, this is a big one. Whether you're using auto test surveys, whether you're using a plugin like Truhu, whether you're just taking emails from your clients when you go, when you talk to them, reward, praise. Let let everyone else know when someone does good. And by the way, the ideas that we hear are also really really important. Have staff members nominate other staff members to get get a pat on the back, get a reward, get something. It's real important to do as we keep moving forward. And, and the last one is lead, don't tell. Set the example. Don't continuously tell the employees what to do. Um, if you look at your agendas carefully, I don't want to call them out by name. If you look at his, the agendas carefully, there's one person that's going to be involved in five different sessions. Three on the agenda, two, just add two to that. All right, and he's filling in for some Eric Marcus on another one. So I've done everything but give you his name now if you can't figure it out. I want you to walk up to him when you see him and say, hey, Steve Alexander told me to come up to you and say, why the hell can't they just do what I tell them to do? All right? By the way, if anyone can't figure it out, Vince Tinarello. So let's just make sure everyone gets this. All right, but I didn't say that. No, only, only, only the people here heard that. Um, I want him to come up to me aggravated about that because it's a point I try and make with him. You can't keep telling them what to do. You have to find more creative ways. And the most important one is set the example. Stop showing them that you're going to tell them what to do and then do something else. It can't work that way. It just can't. Not, not in the companies that we represent here. 
Um, and, I, and I say, that, and I'm sure there are a few people here with 50 or more employees. Um, I know with at least two because I'm working with them in a much larger company. But the numbers were up this morning. Marketini had the numbers up. Right? If you did the math on the number of users and the number of customers that Autotask has, the average customer was 8.4 employees, I think it came to. Might have been 8.3, somewhere in there uh, that it came to. So, so I know, relatively speaking, that that's the case in here. All right? I'm going to move over to Q&A, but I want to put this slide up. Um, I'm testing this survey tool for Kruhu. I'm actually working with it right now. All right? So, and they didn't update my slide. That's theirs. Um, I want you to go to msp-ignite.com slash ACL, whether it's right now or after the session or sometime when you're working someone else's session um, or over lunch or tonight, and simply tell me whether you, whether you love this presentation, like this presentation, or felt there wasn't enough in here for you. I'm gonna give away a free iWatch. It'll just be a random drawing um, from all the people that are at this session and the other sessions I'm doing. Um, and I will email everybody that gives me an email address and let you know who won the iWatch at the end. But I really want to see how this tool works, quite honestly. Um, it's it's kind of cute. Unfortunately, it's not on my slide. but um, And I think it works really well, so if you wouldn't mind doing that. So I have two people out there with microphones. We have nine minutes for Q&A, which is what we were designed to have. Comments, questions, thoughts. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anything along those lines. Okay. I got one in the back and then I've got one up front here. Cameron, right all the way down from Go ahead in the back then. Good morning. Good morning. One of the challenges I have is how to track time specifically in Autotask where I can also account for overtime. If a user is tracking time in multiple tickets because they're working on one, I end up with more time uh, and I can't correctly reconcile that. Okay. Boy, I said I was going to get away from the load of test stuff and it didn't happen. Um, so there's a couple of ways. And Michelle, nod your head or tell me I'm missing something. Um, the one I would do if I was trying to track overtime is I would use a, a separate work type or role for the overtime and tell the employee that they're responsible for, for changing that when it's OT related so that I can pay them. I could recognize that. I used to use a role for it. That way I'd have it also a different rate and then we could always lower the rate down. Is that fair? It's going to triple. All right. So I think, what, I think again, she's smarter than me. So what Michelle picked up on is when you said in the back of the room, I think, if he's working three tickets all after hours, you're not paying overtime for th times three for the one hour he worked. Is that correct? Is that fair? Is that pretty much what you were talking about? Yeah. Um, I don't have an answer for that, to be honest with you. I, I think my answer is, and I'll let you in a second, Michelle. My, my answer is that's why I say that your payroll time sheet should be different than your auto test work time sheet is well, for that reason. You could calculate it though if you were looking at the daily time entered and you noticed that it was exceeded in that start and end time, a uh, live report would definitely be able to detect that, but it would be a custom report. Yeah, so short of a, a custom report, um, or a really granular approving post process that's going to catch that, I don't think you will catch it. I had something up front here, someone asked us the microphone. Karen? Right here. Karen, two rows behind you. Yeah, this one doesn't work. Oh. i got to get you guys a roller skates then. Is it working? Yeah. I was curious to your thoughts on gamification. On gamification, gamifying. It's it's never been my way of doing things, so in, I'm going to say I, I'm not a fan of doing it. Um, it's really all I can tell you. It's, I've just never gone that way with, with with it. It makes sense, you know. I mean, make things fun and people want to be productive, right? That's really what it comes down to. Anyone else a comment on gamification of, of your work? Karen, I'm 
Oh, then the last piece of our puzzle before I let you guys go, since I realize that we're now stepping over lunch, is at every session you go to the next two days, feedback is looked for by Autodesk. Um, you've got in your app, if you've downloaded the app, a survey to fill out. I believe you can fill it out on every session you go to. Is that correct? I think that's the way it works. Um, but please go in there. Autotask wants your feedback so that they can design ACL each and every year to be better and better. And with that, I'm going to let you guys go and grab lunch. Thank you.